Hello everybody, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. Um, I'm gonna try to start actually doing some regular videos on a little bit more regular basis. Um, a lot of my messages that I've been having give to me that are coming to me here lately have been a little bit too long to write out and I've been, they've kind of started getting accumulated on me so I'm trying to try to start getting a little few of them on video so I can share them with y'all. The um, I'm still not used to being in front of the camera. It's a new experience for me, so it's uh, bear with me. Uh, it's a this is a learning experience. I'm trying to grow grow with the Lord here and what He's trying to lead me to do. But um, if you like the videos you've been seeing, um, if you want to catch more, the um, there's the you can go down hit the subscribe button and then there's the bell you press the bell it'll notify you when i put out a new video um hit like it uh it keeps you in the loop it'll keep you seeing more videos and stuff and uh lets me know that y'all are uh, liking what you're seeing and uh keep putting out more stuff but uh what i was wanting to tell you about was is um when we were building on our house um, well, the last couple of years has been just trials. It's been rough. It's been just, you know, it, it seems like when you start a process like that, it, um, you're, you take two steps forward for every one step forward. Uh, you backwards for every one step forward, I guess. I mean, it just, it, it, it will just really try on you. And, you know, you, you have your mixed blessings along the way, but it's, uh, it, it's a long patience building endeavor anytime you build a home. And, um, us doing it the way we've been doing it, just me doing it as I get the money and as I have the time to do it, not bringing in a lot of outside subs. It's been, um, you know, for the carpenter work and stuff, it's made it take a little bit longer. So it's been, it's been a pretty good trial on us, but we had a, um, a time we had one Saturday that we were working on there and I had my uncle and, um, his brother-in-law helping me, um, we were hanging siding up in the end of one of the big gables on the house and we were working up there and got set up on the scaffold and working and uh we were talking as we were working and my uncle had asked me and you know he said well what do you like inside because we were getting outside pretty close i mean we were i think this was i believe that was the last big gable that we had left to put siding in and we'd been kind of putting sealer on it as we went so we were getting pretty close on the outside you know and i told him i said we <clears throat> We have, uh, we've got the, the, you know, pretty much all the electrical was roughed in, um, all the framing was in order, um, heat and air was set. I think the only thing we liked at that time was the plumbing. And, um, and I had somebody that could rough it in for me, but they couldn't get under the house. They weren't able to get under, uh, crawl under the house to get it roughed in. All the plumbing drain lines up through the floor. Well, I told him, I said, man, I, you know, all I need is that. It probably would take somebody, no time, a plumber to do it. But um, everybody was so busy at that time. All the plumbers I knew, I mean, you, I could, they, they didn't even have time to come out and look at it, much less come out and do it, you know. So I was just having, we were just pretty much, well, had the whole process put off, put off because of it. And I was telling him about it. And, you know, and he said, well, I know a couple plumbers, you know. And he named off a couple plumbers that I didn't know. And, well, I was... I was locking their name. He was, he he gave me their. I told him give me their name and number right then, and I was saving it in my phone because as soon as I got a chance, I was going to definitely call them and get them out there. Uh, you know, see if I could get them out there to take a look at it. But uh, we worked on and on that gable, and we up pretty close to the top. We'd worked about an hour up there and getting close to having that end finished up. And there was a truck with a loaded down trailer pulled over on the side of the highway out in front of the house. And, um, gentleman got out, come walking down the driveway. Well, I saw, when I saw him get out and start coming walking down the driveway, I figured he was having some kind of car problems. There's a lot of it along the highway and we have a lot of people asking for stuff. And, uh, well, I come down the scaffold, met him halfway down the driveway and, uh, we got to visit a little bit, you know, and I got a good feel off the guy and we got talking and he said, um, you know, he had had a blowout on his trailer and he was in the process of moving from, Fort Worth, Texas to Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, he's a preacher and he was moving back to his home church. He had been handed back the, you know, the, the, his preacher he started with under there had retired, I believe. And he was taking over 
head preacher of the church as this gentleman was retiring, I believe was the, you know, the case. It's been a little while, but, um, he, um, we talked for a little bit and I told him, I said, you know, I, he said, I just need to put, figure out a place to put this trailer. I don't need it at the moment, but I can pick it up Monday when I get through. I just got to get on up to Little Rock because I got to preach Sunday. Well, I told him he could leave it, just pull it out of the pasture there at the house inside the gate. And I told him it'll be safe there. I'll keep the gate shut when I'm not home and stuff. And I didn't have much going that Monday. So he would be able to, you know, check on the, come by and get the trailer just to call me and I'd make sure I was there to open the gate for him or help him out. Well, he backed the trailer on in and we're talking and my uncle's done running, got a, um, a jack and a four way. And while I'm talking to him, my uncle pulls the tire off the trailer and just puts it in the truck with him and says, here, that way you don't have to worry about come picking a tire up and all that. You can go ahead and get it replaced. And that way all you gotta do is slap it on there when you come back, and pick it up, you know, which, uh, you know, it, it's just kind of how the country people around here are. They try to help each other out. You know, well, we got visiting for a minute and he, while, while we were talking, he looked up at the, our house and, the, you know, and he said, boy, that's going to be nice when you get that finish. And, you know, and we got to talking about it and he asked what I liked. And I told him, I said, man, I, you know, the outside's coming along really good. I'm almost actually finished with it, but the inside I've kind of hit a stalemate. I said, you know, if I could get a plumber, all the plumbers are tied up right now. And he looked at me and he grinned real big. And he said, you know, my gig during the week is a plumber. And he pointed down at the side of his door on his truck. I hadn't even realized he had plumber's logo on it. Well, he, he looked at me and he said, I guess the good Lord did bring, he brought me to you for a reason for after all. And we got talking. I told him all I needed was it roughed in, you know, through the floor level. And, uh, he said, well, let's walk up there and look. And he walked around and looked around real quick. And he's like, man, I can handle this no problem. I'll do it Monday when I come by. I'll take care of you. You don't worry about it. Well, sure enough, Monday come. And he come picked it to pick his trailer up and got it all picked up, hooked up. And when it got underneath that house and he roughed in the, all my plumbing, got everything stubbed up for me. It was a blessing. A blessing. My wife was so tickled because we didn't know how long it was going to be before a plumber could get in. But... The reason why I was recalling on this, what it was coming to me was, is, um, you know, we're the body of Christ. We are actually the hands and feet and the arms and the eyes and the ears of Christ here on earth. You know, Christ is the head, but we're the, we're the body. And we have every, every blood bought Christian, when they get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells within us. So, we have to learn that at the body of Christ, what guides our steps is the Holy Spirit. It's our guide and our comforter. It says that when you get saved, rivers of living water shall flow from your belly. And what this pertains to is not just that, um, it's not a physical thing that you can see, you don't have water dripping out of you or anything like that. This is the Holy Spirit filling us and flowing out of us. And this, this, this flowing of the Holy Spirit out of us, this surrender and letting the Holy Spirit have uh, the lead of us and, the, and, and, and guide us in what we're supposed to do keeps us in the will of God. That's how Jesus was able to walk as a man in the walk. Though he was the son of God, he was divine, he was God. Everything he did, he did as a man. And the reason why was because as being an un, not carnal, not having the sin nature in him like we have, he was a perfect vessel. So when the Holy Spirit came in, he was filled completely. He was actually the first human since Adam that had, or possibly forever, that had the full filling of the Holy Spirit, could follow the Holy Spirit fully to the full potential of it. And he was able to walk his walk because he was able to commune with the Holy Spirit. He kept his mind spiritually renewed. He got his connect, kept his connection with the Holy Spirit deals to where in prayer, the Holy Spirit could breathe enlightenment to him and guide him and tell, tell him what he needed to do. And this kept him in the will of God, which is why he was the perfect sacrifice. A part of it was that he had never stepped out of God's will. He had walked the walk that God had intended for him. Well, in our daily walk, we don't have that full feeling 
of the Holy Spirit. You know, we have those moments when we get really filled up, you know, we have times when we're fuller of the spirit than we are at other times. You know, you get, you, you'll, you'll feel it well enough in you sometimes when you're in deep prayer, listen to really good, strong music, uh, you know, gospel music or listen to anointed preaching and you can feel the spirit rise up in you. And it's the Holy Spirit resonating to what you're, what you're tuning into and it rises up in you. Well, if, if we'll keep ourselves spiritually renewed and keep our connection with the Holy Spirit as good as it, as we can, that Holy Spirit will flow from us. So you can never be, you can never overfill on the Holy Spirit because it overflows and touches all those around you. And you, that feels the effect. I don't know how many times I've been, I was walking, talking to a woman this morning while I was eating breakfast, just a random encounter, got visiting, got talking. And she looked at me and she said, you're a man of God. I was like, well, I tried to, I, you know, I try, I, 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 I try, I try to dream a word and I try to be good. And she said, no, I can just tell you, you're a man of God. I, I did. And we started talking about, and she started talking to me about some stuff. Um, that Holy Spirit, when it, when you, it was, if you, if you get your connection right with God and you let the Holy Spirit have the, the reins of you, it'll flow from you. And they talk about the, the, at the latter days, and the, there's going to be a river that shall flow from the throne of God, and it shall flow and split and go to the east and west. And the branch of it that flows into the Dead Sea, which is just, um, it's a sea that's so salty um, that no life can live within it. I mean, it's, it's just completely devoid of life, which is why they call it the Dead Sea. But when this river of life flows and touches that Dead Sea, prophecy says that it shall erupt to life, to life and fish and uh, uh, plants and everything shall flourish in it from that day forward because this river of life is flowing into it and it breathes new life in it. See, that's what happens to us when we get saved. We get filled with the, this river of life because it, we've become, it, 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 it quickens us and it connects, it gives us that connection with God and a leading that we don't have before. Well, in that flow, if we can keep ourselves in the flow of the living waters of the Holy Spirit, he will guide us to work in God's time to bless those that need blessing around us. Um, I know there's a lot of people now that believe, you know, work your way to heaven. We got to do, you know, you, I'll, I'll become righteous by works. It's kind of got, got, you know, and we have to be careful with that because <clears throat> if you're working for your sake, then you're not working for the glory of God. If you're working because the Holy Spirit pulls you and leads you to do that, if he tugs on your heart and pushes you that direction, then you're doing what the Holy Spirit wants. You're living, you're, you are acting within the will of God. And this is where they say, uh, you will know you by your fruits. Talking about the brothers and sisters of Christ and the saints is because uh, the fruits that they're producing. Well, it's not just the pro uh, fruits that uh, they're, they're doing for their own good. So they're not, you, you're not doing that for God's sake if you're doing it for your sake. If you're just doing a work just to get you into heaven, then you're actually you're actually doing the wrong thing because you're supposed to do, you're supposed to cling strictly on God's salvation plan, which is Christ, His sacrifice at Calvary. If you keep your mind there and then you listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and let Him lead you in the work you're supposed to do, then you're going to bless people. Then you're going to you're letting that river flow from you, and you're touching those around you because it's the true water that's flowing from you. It's not just you. It's not your works. You are in God's will. But when we go in and we let the rivers of uh, that that living water flow within us, when we embrace that river and we keep ourselves spiritually renewed and on point with it, we're letting. God have the reins of us, and you, there's nothing that God wants more than to have that covenant, that that relationship. That you know, there is a reason why we were made. We were made to fellowship with God. He wants us as worshipers, followers that love Him just because we love him, not because he's going to make us live forever, not because he's going to make us rich, not because he's going to do this or do that. 
but we just love him because we love him. And that comes too as a byproduct of accepting Jesus, letting the Holy Spirit come in. He will change your heart. He'll move in you. Um, he'll, that, the Holy Spirit changes you inside in ways that's just amazing. He can do works within you. He'll, he'll, he'll take a hardened heart and he'll soften you up. Um, you know, men that I've seen that have been just hard as stone their whole life, never, you can only hardly ever see no frustration reaction. And all of a sudden you see them with their, with their head down, their hands up and tears flowing from their eyes. And you, you think, whoa, what happened to him? Well, he's not truly him anymore. He finally let the walls down and let that river flow. But those are just all some of the byproducts. But we need to learn how to let God work in us to bless the others in his time. Because when he does it in his time, it's going to be something that's going to be a testimony blessing. Not only that day, I helped that, uh, you know, um, I helped that preacher with the... Watch his trailer, the, you know, for the couple of days, make sure that all the stuff, all the stuff that he didn't want nothing to happen to, he was worried about it. He felt safe after we talked a little bit and he realized that I was somebody to be trusted and he left his trailer. But at the same time, all I wanted to do, all, all I was worried was just trying to help somebody. You know, he was somebody in need and I felt like I was supposed to help him. It was the Holy Spirit nudging me and telling me, you can trust this man, you know, give him a hand. And I did. But at the same time, then, as soon as he found out the need that I had, he knew without a doubt then the Holy Spirit had brought him to me. I mean, this man was not on my highway. He was coming down the interstate when he had the blowout, and our ramp was right there, exit ramp. He took it when our place happened to be the first one. You know, and I still look back and I go, oh, man, I feel I feel kind of guilty because I really owe this preacher a, a tire because Lord had his tire blow out to put him in front of my house that we could bless each other, you know, but you know, that's, that it's just the way God works. He's going to set things in events, but it wasn't just that he put us in our, each other's path at the right time. Uh, it, it, like he did, we had other people there watching that saw what happened. And right after we were, had been talking about this, so they knew without a doubt that, you know, they were like, wow, we have just talked about this. That is so crazy that, you know, and I told him, I said, you got to be careful what you ask for. You know, the Lord will, you know, Lord's always listening. And, you know, and I, but it, he did it at that moment because it was at a point in time when me and my wife were about to give up hope on that. I mean, you know, we were, it was getting to be where it was like, well, I guess the Lord just wants us to wait on this house a little while. I guess it's supposed to be meant to be. You know, we can't get a plumber out here and I guess we're just going to shut things down. And then, bam, here they are in the front yard, you know, but Keep your connection good. Let that, let that, keep yourself spiritually renewed. Let that river flow. And it's not just saying I'm being a good person. It's listening to God when he talks to you. And I know there's a lot of people go, oh man, these Christians are crazy because they talk about God talking to them. You know, because there's that soft, voice in the back of every Christian's my, my head and for the unsaved it's a conscience and that's their mind talking to them about what, oh you need to do this because this will work out better for you and this and this you know when you're saved then it's the Lord talking to you and he's pushing you where you need to be so you gotta learn to listen you gotta let the distractions of this world fade away and you got to learn to listen to God. And I'm, hey, I got my hand up here. I still, still learning to listen to Him myself. It's a lifelong walk. None of us walk it perfect. The only one that did, He did it just for us. The rest of us, we just do the best we can. But learn to let that river flow. Listen to the Lord, and just remember, as you let that river flow, you're not just bless. You're going to bless your family. You're going to bless your friends. You're going to bless people you just run into in the street. It's an awesome thing when we can sit and let the Lord work through us. And when you see it happen and you come back, you go, wow, I can't believe I got to be a part of that. 
I got to have a hand in something that the Lord did to help this person. But anyway, I've talked too long. I just want to get that off my chest. I love y'all. God bless. If you like the videos, subscribe and hit the, hit the bell, like it. And hopefully I can keep some good videos that people like and people enjoy and can help them in their walk. God bless y'all.